Hey, what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about the WordPress Mega Menu that I know I said in the last episode that that was the last one, but actually something happened, so I decided to make another one. Anyway, um, a user wrote me a message in the last video, in the last episode, the supposedly last episode of the Walker Nav class saying that the design that I actually had uh, was different from the final version of the Walker Nav class or like the WordPress Mega Menu. In particular, uh, he was pointing out that in the design, uh, I had another section or another option with a sub sub menu. So if we have other sub menu, like other level of indentation, we should have an automated sub menu here that appears like a little chevron and stuff like that. And plus he wanted to know how to actually create custom options because right now we are dealing with our mega menu through classes, like by specifying um, custom CSS classes inside our menu, we can edit and customize the aspect. But he was wondering how to uh, create the custom options for the user to just like manually uh, edit and manage the mega menu without actually writing everything but we just like maybe um, having checkboxes or uh, drag and drop in custom elements to have a divider a description or to have columns and stuff like that so I'm gonna make these two videos to extend the WordPress mega menu and show you how to achieve these two latest thing. So the first topic and the topic of this video is how to deal with sub sub menu. So another level of indentation of uh, a sub menu and also all the other level of indentations. So first let's create a um, custom link, just an example. And let's use the pound tag or the hash key, whatever you wanna call it. And let's call this sub menu link. Let's add it and let's put it right below like another post because this should be in between two dividers and then let's add a bunch of random posts like one, two, three. I'm gonna put them all three indented inside the sub menu link. One uh, should be here, two and three. Okay, sub menu link, three posts, perfect. So we have a second level of indentation. If we save the menu and we go back in our front end, we refresh and look what happened. Like everything is destroyed. We don't have any more <laughs> all the other links. Uh, I mean, they're here, but we don't have the mega menu anymore. Everything is collapsed. Basically everything is destroyed because the way that we set the Walker Nav class doesn't really work with uh, multiple level of indentation in the mega menu. So in order to fix that, it's actually pretty easy because already WordPress uh, gives us all the tools in order to detect in which level, in which depth level we currently are with our elements in the mega menu. And if you notice pretty much every method of the Walker Nav class, the start level, end level, start element, they have this depth uh, variable attribute that's default is zero. This depth represents the level of indentation. So it starts from zero. That means that when we are in our first type of like column or first level of indentation, this is zero. When we go in inside uh, one level, so we have a sub menu, uh, the depth variable increases by one. So it goes to one. And then if we have another element, it goes to two and then it turns back to one. And then if this element is here is zero, one and zero. So basically we already have an, a unique identifier to know when we have to activate, close and open the mega menu. And when we have to activate, close and open other type of sub menus that are not related to the mega menu. So let's do it. Let's access our Walker Nav class. And first, the first thing that we have to do here, we need to activate the mega menu and create the class mega menu column only if this mega menu ID is different from zero and we double on percent the depth variable 
is identical to zero because we don't want this. We don't want to create multiple columns and opening the mega menu column if we are not in the actual default, if we are not in the actual like zero location. So if we are inside the first level of a mega menu because zero is the first level, one is the second level, two is the third level. I know it can sound kind of like confusing, but zero is just the first level. Just start with that. Same thing we have to do here because we don't want to close the, me the mega menu column and open another one if we are not inside the mega menu and the mega menu is allowed. We are allowing the mega menu only on the first level of a menu. That's perfect. If we save it and we go back in the front end and we refresh, nothing happens. But if we open now the series drop down where we have the class mega menu, you notice all our styles are back in place because right now the mega menu is actually creating the proper classes and indentation and columns and stuff like that that we were having before. The problem is that uh, we are not properly define the opening and closing tags of the mega menu because we have a unique method that we use inside the starter element and now we have to change that. So if we keep scrolling down on the start element here, we add this method. We were doing this because we were automatically counting and changing everything. We were dynamically changing the content of the mega menu, opening and closing columns, creating new columns by counting all the elements inside a specific column. We're not doing this anymore. We're using everything manually and we're detecting column divider like unique classes to do that. So first we can completely extract this thing out of this mega menu because we don't need to check if you're actually inside a mega menu ID of it, the user opened a mega menu because if we have this class that means that the user wants to use this class and that means that we are inside a mega menu. So this can totally be on its own and we can completely delete this stuff. If we check now the front end and we see now the mega menu is back to its normal status. We have our links, description, another column, another column. The issue still persists with the other type of regular menus because we are not actually closing the mega menu at the right time. This is happening because we have this if statement. So let's analyze it together. This if statement checks if the mega menu ID is different from zero. So that means we are inside a mega menu. We have a mega menu opened. Then checks if the mega menu ID is identical to the parent item that is the uh, ID of the parent. So if an element is inside a parent that it's a mega menu, we were doing something inside here that we just put it outside. Otherwise, let's set the mega menu to zero, but setting the mega menu to zero will cause the skipping of all these checks and the simply the closing of the UL wrapper. So we are causing this issue because basically this statement is false. So the else is getting triggered because we have the sub menu. So in the sub menu, when uh, this sub menu link happens and we have another UL element here, we are having this UL element that yes, it's inside the mega menu. So we are inside the mega menu ID, but this is false because the parent ID is not the same ID of the mega menu, but is another parent. So in order to avoid any issue first we need to say also to this method that we don't want to do anything if the depth is not identical to zero so if we're not on the first layer on the first level of our menu don't do absolutely anything and because right now in this if statement we are not doing anything we're just like checking the else, we're using the else, we can just simply convert this to uh, checking in reverse. So if the mega menu ID is different from zero and the mega menu ID is different from the parent and the depth is identical to zero, we can just simply move this inside 
and oopsie <laughs> and remove the else statement so we are doing just one simple check let's save it let's go back in our front end let's refresh and there you go the menu is back to normal the regular drop down menu is there the almighty mega menu that we have is here so now that we fixed all these issues with our drop down here uh, we can take care of the secondary sub menu right now if we try to click on the sub menu two things happen the mega menu disappears and the drop down doesn't open so this is an issue because the uh, the way that the drop down works of like the regular drop down of bootstrap is by if whenever you click it detects your click whenever you're clicking the drop down automatically closes because it propagates click event that close all the open drop down all the open extra elements like absolute elements that you have we need to stop that if we are clicking on a sub menu to do that, we can do a really simple jQuery detection that it's a sort of like built-in thing of Bootstrap. So first, let's analyze the classes of our submenu link here. So our submenu link has a unique class called dropdown submenu that it's different from the dropdown menu class or the mega menu class column that we're using and plus we have the ul that is the drop down menu but we don't need to care about this so first let's go inside our editor let's access the scripts and i'm going to put everything in the main but of course you can organize your file as you wish it doesn't really matter but i'm going to use plain jquery you can use standard javascript or refactoring whatever framework you're using but jquery is like the easiest and quickest way to do it so we need to say to Bootstrap that if we are inside a drop down menu and we're clicking on a drop down sub menu A link, so if a link inside a drop down sub menu that it's inside a drop down menu is clicked, so we detect the click method, we're gonna open a nameless function. And inside this nameless function, we're going to say that we want to stop the propagation. And in the nameless function, we pass the E, that is the event. It carries the entire event, like the click event on this element that we specified. And we're saying that this event should stop the propagation of whatever the thing it's linked to that event. So in this case, because uh, bootstrap connects a propagation event to the click whenever a drop down menu is open we are stopping that only if we click on a sub menu so if now we try we open the series and we click on the sub menu link see what happened i'm clicking can you hear the click yes okay but the drop down the mega menu is not shutting down it's not closing because we stopped the propagation if i click here it closes so it works perfectly everywhere else but it's not on the sub menu link but the sub menu is not actually opening the drop down and that's because we are not respecting the default structure architecture of bootstrap bootstrap automatically creates a class adds a class open to the container to open a drop down if you respect its own architecture so if you have the properly embedded indented elements if you have a ul and then a li and then a a tag and then a sub menu and then a ul so you need to respect the structure because we're not respecting the structure we have an extra type of markup html markup an extra type of structure bootstrap doesn't know where a sub menu is anymore so we need to manually trigger this thing and it's going to be pretty easy so let's go back in our text editor and inside the jquery trigger option that it's always the same so if we are clicking on a link in a drop down sub menu the thing that we have to do before stopping the propagation otherwise we're gonna prevent whatever we can detect that this element let's go back to our parent drop down sub menu and let's say that on this we want to toggle the class 
of open that is the built-in class of bootstrap that it's used to open and close a drop down a ul drop down menu that it's inside the lee element that has a class of open so by saying this if we go back here now we click on series and we click on submenu link boom drop down click again on submenu link close the drop down open close open close Perfect, and now we can click on whatever link and we go to the actual link. And this is perfect, look at that. Of course, you can just simply style it with CSS. At this point, you can put the chevron, just hide it, put another chevron here, uh, make this drop down appear to the right, to the top, to the bottom. You can style it whatever you want. You can use the same tutorials video that I used to style the mega menu in a different way of a regular drop down. But the point is that by simply editing a couple of things that are just really like a couple of methods in the Wolkernaf class by detecting the depth and actually cleaning up a little bit our if statement now it's way cleaner than before we were able to extend the drop down functionality to allow also sub sub menu and then we can deal with pretty much all the level of indentations that we want and this is pretty great right so in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to create some custom options in the appearance menu of the administration panel in order to not use classes anymore, but use these custom options to customize the look of the menu of the drop down mega menu on the front end. So it's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.